What's up YouTube, it's Aaron from Derby City Overlanding and today as part of our Overland Tent Review Series we're going to be going over the Generation 1 Roof Nest Falcon XL. Uh, I've ran this tent on a few different vehicles, right now it's on my 2020 Jeep Gladiator. Absolutely love this tent, it's a great tent. But we're going to go over some of the things that I like and some of the things I dislike. Uh, we're going to break these things down into categories as we're going to do with future tents in this series, whether they be hard shell rooftop tents, soft shell rooftop tents, or even just ground tents, right? Uh, so those categories are going to be the setup and takedown, 1 through 10. Uh, we're going to go over the economy. What does it do to your gas mileage? Uh, some are going to hurt it more than others, right? Uh, we're going to go over build quality and its appearance because you don't want to invest all this money and basically have a, a dog turd on top of your car, right? Like that's Nobody wants that. Uh, then we're going to go over its comfort and ride quality. So how does it affect your driving down the road? Is it still comfortable to drive or is it crazy loud and drives you up a wall, right? Uh, then we're going to jump into probably the most important category and that's the price. Like how much does this tent cost? How much does other tents cost? And then we're going to compile that all into an overall rating. So without further ado, I'm going to try to make this short. Uh, we'll jump right into this tent. All right guys, so the first category we're going to talk about is the setup and takedown. Uh, the setup on this take, the setup and takedown on this tent is incredibly easy. You just have to operate these two latches on the sides here. So one, two, pop those out. You can go ahead and push this guy up. Pull out your telescoping ladder, which comes with the tent. Clip it onto the bracket. Take this retention band here. Drop it low. Open up your tent. If you don't have this rain fly on here, which comes with the tent, it's optional if you want to run it or not. If it's on there, throw your tent poles in. That grabs right there. And right there, and your tent's ready to go. You can climb inside, and you're good to camp. Take down is just about just as easy. Reverse the process. Take your tent poles out. Pull your fly in. This retention band here helps to pull all the fabric in as you're lowering the tent. Grab the strap, pull it on down. If you reach in here and give it a good bear hug, pull in the side materials, it'll come down nicely. Tuck that extra material in. And you can bring it down, you can snap your latches and all that. So it's really easy to set it up and it's just as easy to take it back down. This tent scores a nine in this category and the only reason it's not a 10 is because if you've got thick bedding, it's very hard to close this tent down with that thick bedding in there because of how low profile it is, which has its benefits in other categories. But in this one, with your bedding, you might have to store it separately from the tent, which can be a little bit of an inconvenience. Not much, but a little bit. So it's definitely gonna get a nine still because I don't know of any tents that are easier to set up and take down than that. All right guys, so the next category we're gonna discuss in this is uh, gas mileage, your economy and stuff like that. Now, any of these tents are gonna hurt your fuel economy when you're putting them on top of an SUV or something of that nature. Now. This is probably the most aerodynamic of all the tents just because of how low profile it is running down the side. And uh, that helps you out because that's what hurts your gas mileage is not as much the weight of the tent itself, but just the wind resistance. So running it on the bed of this truck or on the bed of any truck platform like a Tacoma or this Jeep Gladiator, for example, uh, you, I personally haven't noticed a single effect on my gas mileage with this thing on the half rack system right below my roof line. When I was running it on a two-door Jeep Wrangler, on the other hand, it killed my gas mileage. It dropped it by roughly four miles per gallon. I was getting 12 miles to the gallon on my trip to Arkansas from Kentucky. So that really, really hurt at, at the gas pumps in a long trip like that. The only way you're gonna really get around having any sort of hurt to your gas mileage is by just running a ground tent. So 
for those reasons, I've got to throw this thing at an eight on gas mileage just because there are better options for better gas mileage. But as far as having a rooftop tent, this is probably the best. That's about the highest that any rooftop tent's gonna get in this category. So throwing that out there, it's an eight in that category. Let's move on to the next topic. All right, so you guys see this thing opened up, so, and you've seen it close. So when I go into build quality and appearance, you can rate the appearance however you want. I think it's an absolutely beautiful tent. When it's closed on top of your vehicle, it doesn't look like a big bag of dog crap on top of your car. It's sleek, it's slender, it looks good. Uh, opened up, I think it's one of the nicest looking tents. It is very spacious. You can fit two grown adults and two medium sized dogs in it just fine. I can tell you that from experience. And uh, I, I think it just, it looks good. Uh, it's one of the better looking rooftop tents out there. And the build quality is impeccable. You've got very, very thick canvas on this. So I've had it out in 20 degree weather, camped just fine, stayed pretty warm. I've had it out in excruciatingly hot weather and it's got your, your mesh windows on all three sides. So the views from inside are just, you're, it's great. If you can have it opened up all the way, you can look out. Uh, the rain fly, everything stays dry on the inside of the tent in rain. I can tell you that from experience as well. And when snow accumulates on top of it, there is no point in which the snow is going to accumulate and cause your tent to like droop in or anything. It'll come straight down this and the rain fly is going to come straight down that. And I can tell you that from experience as well. So I've got to give it a 10 in this category. There's, there's not much better you can do to be honest. I guess so for the comfort category, we're going to talk about comfort while you're camping and then the uh, ride quality and comfort in your vehicle when you're driving down the road. So as you can see, this thing has a very thick mattress in it. It's a memory foam style mattress. And then you've got your condensation mat underneath it with bedding and stuff like that in there. It's a very spacious tent. I've had two adults and two medium sized dogs in this tent just fine with plenty of space. It's a very, very comfortable tent while you're actually out camping on the trail easy to get into with the ladder and just like when you're out on the trail and you want to enjoy the views you've got three full-size like windows while you're camping just for great views if you go somewhere pretty and you camp you want to enjoy the views and it's great for that now as far as ride quality when you're driving down the road depending on what you have it on on the old jeep with it on top of the vehicle it was very noisy going down the road because of the wind resistance. On this vehicle, you don't even notice it's back there. So with that in consideration, because uh, I'm gonna have to rate this in comparison with like ground tents when it comes to ride quality and stuff, I'm gonna have to give this thing a nine in that category. Absolutely great tent, very, very comfortable, and ride quality is not hampered much as long as you've got it on a half rack system on a truck like this. If it's sitting on top of an SUV, it's gonna be noisy. That's just part of life. All right, guys, so as far as price goes on a lot of these things, your rooftop tents are gonna be more expensive than a lot of your ground tents that you're gonna get. That's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, now, when you get into soft shell tents, soft shell tents are gonna be cheaper than your hard shell tents. This tent comes in at a price tag of $3,795. That hurts a lot. So do I think it's worth the money? Uh, depending on how often you're gonna use it, yes. As often as I use this thing, I think it's worth every single penny. Uh, it's a very, very good quality tent and it doesn't affect you on a trail. It doesn't really kill your center of gravity. It is pretty lightweight and it doesn't hurt your gas mileage when you're going long distances. You can leave this thing on for most of the season and not really mo notice much of a difference on a half rack. So price, I've got to give it like a six in this category though, just simply because there are a lot cheaper options that you might be just as happy with. And if you wanted to pay the money and get this one, I promise you'll not regret it. So in this category, it's gonna have to get a six just because of that price tag. All right guys, so the overall rating this tent's gonna get is an 8.4 out of 10. Uh, as I throw more tent reviews out on this page, it'll have more uh, 
legitimacy compared alongside other tents but overall man this tent is just it's a great tent uh, the price is pretty steep on it but you also get what you pay for it is a very high quality tent I talked about all the different categories and the reason why I got that rating 8.4 is just an average out of all of those so thank you guys for watching if you want to see more content, more uh, rooftop tent reviews and ground tent, just overland tent reviews in general, just let me know in the comments and subscribe for more, right? So I'm going to record a few other things on this channel, like just different uh, trips and where we go, what we do, uh, different upgrades for your overlanding rig, uh, helping you decide which tent might be the best for you, other gear that you should take with you, you know, if, if you want to take showers while you're out and you want a water tank you know what's some good options for that if you want to do a solar setup so that way you can charge your phone charge anything we're going to talk about stuff like that as i install it on this vehicle so you know just stick along for the for the adventure guys and uh as far as it goes smash that subscribe button come along for the for the trip and yeah i'll see you guys in the next video